Breaking, the UK has now become the first country in Europe to record more than 30,000 deaths linked to coronavirus. The Prime Minister said that as part of the government's approach, there would be 200,000 tests a day by the end of this month. He was challenged in the Commons by the new Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, who said that the UK's high death rate was the result of being too slow on the lockdown, on testing and on the provision of protective equipment. Well, the latest figures show that there were 649 recorded deaths linked to coronavirus in the last 24-hour period, and that brings the UK total so far to 30,076. And that figure, which was announced by the government, includes people who tested positive in hospitals and in care homes and the wider community. The Prime Minister signalled that some lockdown measures could be eased next Monday and that he would set out his intentions in a statement on Sunday, as our political editor Laura Kunzberg tells us. Small clusters of commuters. Westminster quiet. Masked sometimes. They're not lonely anymore. One new normal has begun, weeks after Keir Starmer became the Labour leader. Good morning. Good morning. The first of his weekly chance to put the Prime Minister under pressure. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and I'm glad to see he's back in Parliament. How are you going to handle the new Labour leader, Prime Minister? With Boris Johnson back at work, back at the dispatch box too. I would like to welcome the Prime Minister back to his rightful place in the chair. Yeah. But no hiding place from the rising coronavirus toll, now tipping 30,000. That's now the highest number in Europe. It's the second highest in the world. That's not success or apparent success. So can the Prime Minister tell us how on earth did it come to this? He's right to, to draw attention to the uh, appalling statistics uh, not just in this country, but of course around the world. At this stage, I don't think that uh, international comparisons and uh, the data is, is yet there to draw the conclusions uh, that we want. Comparing different countries' statistics is difficult, but it's not irrelevant. And every number is another heartbreak. Just nine members of Ron Beard's family bade farewell to him at a tiny funeral this afternoon. He passed away in hospital last week after contracting the virus in his care home, where his family had been told there was no infection and they say staff had no protective kit. My mum sadly had to go to the car park and say goodbye to her dad through the window, which, um, which was pretty heartbreaking for her after having been by his bedside for so long. I think that's been one of the hardest things for the family to deal with, is not being able to hold his hand in times when he needed it. And I know, especially for my mum and her sisters, knowing that he died alone after they had been at his side for so long was the particularly um, heartbreaking thing to come to terms with. The priest did an amazing job and it was a wonderful send off, albeit slightly strange. Um, his last song as he, as the curtains closed was You'll Never Walk Alone. What was happening behind closed doors in care homes, now very much in public and political view. Deaths in care homes continue to go up. 12 weeks after the health secretary declared that we're in a health crisis, I have to ask the prime minister, why hasn't the government got to grips with this already? There's an epidemic uh, going on in care homes, which uh, is something I, I bitterly uh, regret, and uh, we're, we've been working very hard for weeks to, uh, to get it done. In the last few days, uh, the, there has been a palpable improvement. There's no consistent evidence that situation is improving. But the Prime Minister suggested some lockdown measures could ease from Monday. We'll want, if we possibly can, to get going with some of these measures on Monday. In the sparse chamber, Mr Johnson sometimes looked around for cheerleaders who were not there. In this new contest of opposites, in the end, it's one on one. And Boris Johnson and the government are under a lot of pressure in this pandemic on lots of fronts, whether it's repeatedly missing the testing targets, still trying to get a real grip of what's going on behind closed doors in care homes, or winning the race that no country wanted to come first in, being right now number one in terms of the death toll in European countries. But we are about to enter the next phase of how the government's trying to manage all of this. The Prime Minister confirming that on Sunday he will announce something of an exit.
Brexit strategy and he hoped that some changes could come into force from Monday. But I think we will also hear a lot of what one minister described to me as prodding. As an example, Cabinet Minister Robert Jenrick already said today that construction sites and infrastructure projects in England should be getting going if they can do so safely. So we are not expecting next week, and we can't say this enough, any kind of grand unlocking of throwing the doors open. This will be the start of a gradual rolling back of the measures. The stay-at-home message will disappear, but this is not a process that is going to happen fast, and everyone needs to be prepared for that. Laura, once again, many thanks. Laura Kinsberg there at Westminster. As Laura was saying, ministers are acknowledging that mass testing is crucial for controlling the pandemic so that cases can be isolated and the spread can be restricted. But for the fourth day, the government missed its daily target of 100,000 tests, which was hit once last Friday, and even that measure was disputed by some experts. But the Prime Minister has now pledged to increase testing to 200,000 a day, as we heard, by the end of this month. Our health editor Hugh Pym looks at the state of the testing strategy and whether the right people are being given priority. A busy testing station today run by military personnel and there was a range of essential workers wanting to know whether or not they had the virus and whether it was safe to get back to work. I am a nanny. I had to make sure before I go back to work, I had four children to look after. I have to make sure that I am fine. I'm working in freight forwarding at the moment, so I'm still working. So it's important for me to obviously be safe for myself, family. I'm a teacher, a primary teacher, and um, I've been feeling a bit uh, up and down, a bit sort of concerned if I am now thinking of what, that we might go back to work. The government's greatly expanded the list of those eligible to be tested over the last two weeks with a lot more drive-in testing slots and home kits bookable online. A week ago, just over 80,000 tests were provided and the next day that figure went above the government's then target of 100,000 a day. Since the weekend, it's fallen back to below 70,000 yesterday. It's not clear why that happened. This is the entrance to Fairfield Residential Home. We're currently on lockdown. Care home residents and staff have been told they can be tested, vital checks so those testing positive can be kept separate from others. But at this home, they've tried several times to order tests for those who are unwell and have had no response. I'm very angry and somewhat frustrated when I hear the ministers telling us that everybody in care homes can be tested. The government believes that the testing has happened However, on the ground, it's such a big logistical um, proposal, people can't do it. And it's been argued there's no way for care staff to get fast-tracked through the online booking system. The government's made very clear announcements about the fact that health and care workers should have access, all health and care workers should have access to testing, and yet the system that it's built doesn't have that prioritisation in built. Where's the strategy? Hospital leaders say even with the extra capacity, it's still difficult to get NHS staff tested quickly if they need it. There's not much point in having a test that takes up to five days to turn round if actually the individual member of staff is then spreading infection in the meantime. So we absolutely need to ensure that every member of staff who's showing symptoms can get a test quick enough, and that's not happening at the moment. The Department of Health said tests were available to more than 25 million people and the rapid increase in capacity was allowing testing for more workers who need it. Hugh Pym, BBC News.